Today, I want to talk to you about my experience with Cisco's RV042 small business router and its use as my PPTP server. This router is inexpensive. The list price is about $200, but it is readily available from discounters at a little over half of that price. It includes a lot of Cisco's big router features, including a PPTP server that's burned into the firmware. Installation of the Cisco RV042 router is not difficult, and its basic configuration logic follows the general principles that are well documented elsewhere here at AskMrWizard.com. Ask Dig into our Networking Fundamentals section if you need an introduction to those basic topics. Once installed, this router can be accessed for administrative configuration from a browser on a locally connected computer in the usual way. However, once logged in as an administrator, the more sophisticated nature of this router will become immediately apparent, especially in the VPN sections of its administrative menus. Several different sets of VPN tools are available. For our purposes today, we're going to click on the last of the available VPN tools offered in Cisco's VPN menu. They call it the PPTP server. Then a dialog box is immediately populated with prompts and blank information boxes that, will, that, that we will use to specify the behavior of our new PPTP virtual private network server. Now, being a low-cost device, the RV042 is limited to just five PPTP connections, and each must be dedicated to a single authorized person. The blank information boxes must be populated with the information necessary to authorize five appropriate people to access our LAN. The first thing we'll want to configure is the IP address range that we will allow the VPN server to assign to remote computers that use an appropriately configured VPN client in order to connect. We must designate a group of IP addresses from the same IP subnet that is, use, that is in use on our LAN. Typically, these will follow the familiar general pattern that's in use in most small LANs. 192.168.something.something It's important that we choose a range of addresses that's completely isolated from any IP addresses already in use, so we don't create the possibility of having two different devices fighting over the same single IP address on our LAN. Furthermore, the range of addresses that we designate here has to be separate from any local IP addresses that ever might be assigned. So we also need to avoid any blocks of addresses that will ever be in use by any DHCP servers in this router or anywhere else on our LAN. Now, if you aren't familiar with LANs or subnets or DHCP servers, you can learn all about them in our Networking Fundamentals section. There's also some good information on these subjects in our wireless networking area. We encourage you to explore those parts here at AskMrWizard.com. Now, in my case, I entered 192.168.10.150 in the IP address box that's labeled Range Start, and I entered 192.168.10.154 in the box labeled Range End. Now that I've reserved five of my local IP addresses for exclusive use by remote people accessing my network from remote PPTP clients, I need to designate some authorized usernames and choose passwords for them. I can create as many as five of these with the RV042. For example, suppose I want to authorize somebody with the username Bill Bailey, and I want to assign the password, please come home, spelled in this unique way. I would type Bill Bailey in the box named Username, and I would type the password Please Come Home twice, once in each of the two boxes named New Password and Confirm New Password respectively, using the unique spelling that makes it hard to guess. Then I would click on the button Add to List, whereupon the username Bill Bailey is displayed in the large box below. I could repeat that exercise for as many as four more users. Once I've configured as many as five available usernames as I expect to use, I must click the button labeled Save, which causes the router to store the information necessary to authenticate the corresponding users in its permanent memory. At that point, my system is ready for remote access. Authorized users must then be taught how to find and configure their PPTP client software, which will ask them for one of the properly pre-configured usernames, like Bill Bailey, and its associated password button. Come home. Please come home. Anybody that tries this without precisely matching the authentication information will be immediately disconnected, exactly as we would hope. On the other hand, when an authorized user provides the proper authenticating credentials, username and password, the PPTP client in their computer will work with the PPTP server in my Cisco router here 
to load a new network driver into their computer, configuring it with one of, of the five local IP addresses that we just designated, and subsequently routing traffic addressed to or from the internet through that new virtual device as if it were inside my local network. A new session is thus established, and until that session is terminated by logging out or, or by killing the PPT client or, or until it times out due to inactivity, the authorized user can enjoy a very powerful connection into my LAN and all of its traffic is encrypted between his remote PC and my router, so that insecure links like Wi-Fi segments or Ethernet broadcasts become very difficult to exploit to my disadvantage. Even if he's using an insecure technology like basic email over a public Wi-Fi connection, casual Wi-Fi observers near him won't be able to make sense of the exchange data unless they know the secret authorized password information or put forth a great deal more effort and time with some advanced and rather esoteric tools. Take a look now at the bottom of this PPTP server menu page. You'll see a small area labeled connection list. After an authorized user starts one of these PPTP sessions, that list is expanded to show his username, the worldwide routable internet address that he used to get to our router, and the new non-routable local IP address from our local subnet that has been assigned to him for the duration of his session. Of course, this information is erased after, at the end of the session after he logs out. Well, that about wraps up this description of the point-to-point -point protocol using Cisco's low-cost RV042 small business router. Now, in a subsequent episode, we plan to show in great detail how easy it is to find and configure the free PPTP client software that's available to every user of Microsoft's popular Windows operating system. Watch for that episode soon. And for those of you that just can't wait to try this technology, we know that armed with the information in this publication, you can do it on your own. Thanks. Thanks for watching this clip. If you are watching all of our clips just on YouTube, you are missing out on a lot of the very best stuff because this clip is part of a huge library. There are thousands of clips here at AskMrWizard.com related to this and similar subjects that will help you become the master of your own technology in your home or small business. This clip can be found in context with other related clips, related text, and our forums where we answer questions. You'll also find advertisements from vendors that sell things related to this study. Please support them and support us. We appreciate your help. From YouTube, it's very easy to get to our website. Just click on the link at the very beginning of YouTube's descriptive text.